Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mark Loeffler Experience. Thanks everyone for joining me. Thanks for people who I saw out in Edmonton who are now watching or have been watching the whole time. We were out there looking at buildings and uh, yeah, we put an offer in. A couple of clients put an offer in out there. The multifamily market out there, oh, shooting fish in a barrel right now, my friends. Shooting fish in a barrel, it's terrific. All right. So we are doing National Statistics Day, so this Canadian real estate market, the stats just came out on Korea this today and we're gonna analyze them and go through them and just have a quick chat about it, because it's fun. If you don't find this fun, then never mind. I don't, just joking around. Anyways, so national sales homes declined 3.3% month over month in, in no, from October to November, which happens every year. November has fewer sales than October. Monthly activity came in 38.9% below November 2021, which was, if not the record year for November, then it was pretty darn close. So it was a hell of a lot of sales last November. A uh, number of newly listed properties came down 1.3%. Home price index declined by 1.4% month over month. So it was 1.4% cheaper to own the same home in November than it was in October. And it's down 4.4% year over year. So it's now actually 4.5% cheaper to buy that home, even with the interest rate, than it was last year at this time. Year over year price decline is 12%. That number is just gonna get bigger. We know that. I expect to see 30, 35% in February, March. Of course, that's what's gonna happen. That's what we're down right now from the peak in February till now is probably around 35%, 30, 35. So you guys can read all this stuff, local, 60% of all local markets, saw fewer sales, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Here's the one. So yeah, November 22 came in 39% below the record month from last year, but stood about 13% below pre-COVID-19 10 year average November sale. So it is lower, like it was a slower November. I can attest to that, we were slower here. Yeah, so again, they're just saying no, no surprises, moderating sales, lower sales, moderating prices, they've been seeing for months now. New, so with the exception of 2019, November 2022 saw the fewest listings that month in 17 years. So just putting it out there, there wasn't a lot that people were just like saying, oh, I gotta get on here and sell. Will there be more inventory at some point? Which again, if sales, sales stay the same or, or slowing down, and inventory spikes is that's when we get the that's I mean that's when we can go in and say oh there's five of this same house all right well if you don't sell me this one I'll go buy that one and then it's a race to the bottom to see who will accept the lowest offer and that's when we see massive how price decline so if we don't see a lot of inventory coming on the market those predictions that we're going to lose another 30 percent from where we are today well they just don't make sense to me and I know there's people who watch this channel who are saying we're gonna do that. Guys, I just don't see it right now, but you know, I, 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 I'm just a guy on YouTube. I know some of you guys love when I say that. I'm just a guy on YouTube making videos and putting my money where my mouth is by buying Canadian real estate. So aggregate composite HPI, so it's 11.5% cheaper right now to own than at the peak. So in February, so it's cheaper. Even though interest rates were one, two percent, whatever they were, it's cheaper to own now than it was then. All right, let's go through the house map here. So they added a new feature. I really did like this actually. So we can go coast to coast and we can see province by province how they're doing. So Newfoundland and Labrador is up from 2021. Quebec is slightly up year over year. New Brunswick, up. Nova Scotia, up. BEI, where are we here? Up. Ontario, not up. And I'm just, again, southwestern Ontario and lower mainland BC, obviously probably half the population in Canada lives there. So they're going to affect the, the, the national housing stats more than obviously the, all the East Coast provinces and as you can see, a lot majority of the prairie provinces because, oh, lo and behold, Manitoba, not up, but not really down. Saskatchewan, up a little bit, 
one, two percent. Like they're down half a percent, not even half a percent in Manitoba. Alberta, same thing. 0.75%, maybe 1% year over year. British Columbia, down 10%. You know, 8 to 10%. Let's just have a look. Uh, Northwest Territories are down. Oh, sorry, that's the Yukon. That's Northwest Territories. And then I guess we don't have stats for none of it. It's, there's none of, the, none of its stats up there. Uh, and then, yeah, let's just go, let's go from the West Coast and move over. Let's see what's uh, going on out there. Let's see uh, Victoria numbers. So saying Victoria is still up 6.4% year over year. I don't know that, yeah, yeah I don't know. Because like, again, that was down 10%. Right, sorry, we don't want Vancouver. We want Greater Vancouver. So Greater Vancouver is only down 0.6%. But yet, British Columbia as a whole is down 10. There's something funny with these stats. I don't know. I find this interesting. Let's see Edmonton. So Edmonton is down again, just a little bit less than 1%. It's right on the, uh, the average there. Calgary is still up 10%. Uh, I don't know. Like how, how would the province be down when Calgary, which is the biggest housing market in Alberta, isn't down. CRA, Korea, we need to have a chat. Because I think you're pulling information and it's not quite accurate. And I don't like that, to be honest with you. I'm going to try to find more accurate information for everyone here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see. Calgary market. So, I mean, here it is. Benchmark price is up 8.56%. Average price. Oh, is that what they're doing? They're doing benchmark? Because the average price is lower. 440 or 490. Hmm. Very interesting, Korea. Very interesting. Oh, that's well, daily house summary. But as you can see, Lake Calgary, total sales down 20%, but new listings are also down 20% year over year. They actually had more sales than they had in November 2020, and they have fewer active listings than they have in November 2020 and November 2021. And their days on market's lower. So to me, I look at that and I say, that's a strong market. Like that would, I would say that's a strong market. Okay, sales are declining. So they have funny, luckily they have, like, this is great. I just don't have year over year numbers and I'd like to see that all in one spot, but this is nice and fancy. As you can see, single family is down, well, average is down 2%, medians up, which I like medium better, but uh, condos down. There's a lot of lower end condos that, are con that were um, apartment like conversions and they're selling for, for stupid cheap money out there. Like you can buy one for 30 to 50 grand, but it comes with a lot of special assessments. Duplexes, which are semi-detached houses out there. They're, so here's their basic trend that they're following. Which is basically, again, we know it's flat. I don't know. I, 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 I like that you guys are putting pictures in there, but I wanna see historical data. I mean, I guess I can go click on these things. Let's see November 2020, what we were doing. I like to see it all just boom, 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 like three years, why not, right? Like, yeah, this isn't very pretty, but this is what you wanna see. New listings in 2020 were 1,500. I don't know what we were here. Oh, same, 1,500, but month over month, it's down. Year over year, it's down. It was like they had a boom in 2021. Uh, do, do, do sales year to date. Seven, so 908 that month. So they're down even from 2020 numbers. So it's slower, right? Like it, that's why you're seeing the prices go down. And this is why you're seeing that average days on market are going up. And this is why it's like kind of like shooting fish in a barrel out there right now, buying apartment buildings. 
and I was out there yesterday at a networking event and somebody was saying that, you know, whatever happens in Calgary takes six to eight months to show up in Edmonton. I hope that's true because the Calgary housing market is doing quite fine. So I hope that happens. Anyways, let's go back to this map. Uh, Winnipeg, we know that that's probably gonna be up because the whole province is up or yeah. oh, down 2%. There you go, but that's what the province was down. Not very much. Uh, moving, moving right along. Oh, we didn't do a Saskatoon or Regina, but they're up. And we got the, let's just say, let's check out Barry down 9%. Um, Brantford, 8.2. Cambridge down 10.6%. Cornwall, 8. I mean, this is pretty, going to be pretty common across the board. 11.3 for Durham. It was one of the highest flying regions there for a while. I always like to check in on Windsor. It's still up 2.5% because, you know, their prices were so cheap. So cheap to start off with. Uh, Hamilton, down 9.4%. Uh, let's say, oh, Sioux, probably up still, right? Yeah, Sioux's still up 9.1%. Average price was 256. It's still two. 280. Still really affordable in today's interest rates. And I bet you they had a huge spike in rental prices up there too. Kingston is still up 1%. Good job for all you guys bought in Kingston. That's amazing. Ottawa, nice and steady. Okay, it's down 1%. Not having that swing, right? Peterborough, 1.7. That was a high flying area too, so I'm surprised at that one. York region, always a bellwether, 6.4. And again, I'm probably going to guess Montreal is up slightly or just down. Yeah, up 1%. And we know all, everything out east is up. Let's check out. Uh, doo, doo, doo. Let's go to Cape Breton, 12.2. Um, Halifax, Dartmouth, 7.4. Prince Edward Island, we already checked that one, 8.8. .8. Yeah, like it's guys. And will they come down in price? Well, interest rates don't affect them as much as, you know, if you're buying a million dollar home, the, you know, tripling of, of long term rates going from 1.6% to 5.4 really affects you. But if you're buying a $310,000 home, it's just not going to affect you as much. And that's just how it's gonna be. So the lower cost areas are gonna weather this storm better than obviously the higher cost areas. Anyways guys, that's my update for today. If you guys are thinking about getting coaching, I am gonna accept five students for next year. I do have three applications already, just from mentioning on my last video that I did. So if you are interested, DM me. Let's see if there's a fit and we'll go from there. All right, everyone, thank you so much. Have a great day, and we'll catch you next time.